Social media bullies are terrible, but so is bullying in general, especially when it's still happening in our schools every single day. As a mom with a young son, I can't even imagine having to endure this. But in a story that's gained nationwide attention, eight-year-old Gabriel Tay from Cincinnati, Ohio, committed suicide two days after what some people are describing as vicious bullying by his fellow students in a school bathroom. The graphic security footage has been released and appears to show other students kicking and striking Gabriel while he lay for five minutes on the floor unconscious. Due to its disturbing nature, we have made the decision to not play the video. This incident has triggered a police investigation. The lawyers for Gabriel's mother alleged that school officials did not tell Gabriel's mother about the assault or that he had lost consciousness, wow. reportedly only telling her he had fainted. So ladies, I for one am sick and tired of hearing about incidents like that. They need to stop. What do you guys think that could be done so all this nonsense just stops? Well, there's definitely a problem because something happened, there was an assault, it wasn't mm -hmm. just bullying. Mm -hmm. I think we need to, we really need to differentiate yes. what's bullying and what's an assault. And mm -hmm. for kids to gang up and kick, that was an assault. But then there was also something that happened because he, he went to the hospital, then he went back to school. When he went back to school that day, when he went home, that's when he committed suicide. Yeah. So something happened, and I think that the school should be responsible because they know what actually this, guy, this little boy was being bullied. Yeah. There should have been some type of counseling, some type of yeah. meeting, something to talk to those kids. Or a simple phone call to the kid's mother that actually explains what really happened. Yeah. You shouldn't wait to something bad happens and then you see video be released to say, oh, 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 yeah, um, uh, he, he fainted. Like, right. What, what is he that? trying to cover up their own tracks? Exactly. Yeah, they were trying to cover up and he didn't even tell his mother, uh, allegedly from the story that I've read, he didn't tell his mother that he had got yes. assaulted. I know, he but said if that the it was school, a stomachache. As a mom, if the school would have called me and told me what really happened, then I would literally sit down and talk to my child and say, you know, what, what is going on? And, and just maybe this could have been prevented or, you know, avoided. Yeah. So, yeah. or if I can just add another thing. Um, as, as a person who really went through bullying between Eighth grade and high school, I was bullied in my middle school, so much so that the girl who bullied me was two years older than me, and the only thing that I could do in order to not have her come to my house or to threaten me further is I left the school district. So that is why I'm a graduate of Milpitas High, which is a 30 minute drive away. And what I told my parents at the time was that I just didn't like the school. I, thought, I said, the school is bad. And of course my parents, you know, they want me to have a better education, so they took me to Mil Milpitas. But my secret is that I really, was badly bullied to the point that she just antagonized me all the time. And I'm painting this because when I think about young Gabriel or I think about anybody out there who's been bullied, mm -hmm. you really feel trapped. You don't know what to say because if you tell somebody, it's going to continue and it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. There's, you. Unless you remove that person from the school or move from your house or hide where you go to the store, it's yeah. always gonna come at you in some way. So one thing I really thought about and prayed about this situation I applaud the school, first of all, and any schools who have video cameras, but if you have them, check them mm -hmm. daily. There should be somebody who's just monitoring all the action that's yes. going on because there is no reason why that video camera, thank God to the homicide detective that actually stepped into the situation to check the, yeah. the situation, to say, wait a minute, why is an eight-year-old kid aware of how to take a necktie and put it around his neck? There is something deeper in here. So a homicide detective stepped in and then checked the videotape. So that videotape was found way weeks later and after the death of this young boy. There should be somebody monitoring those tapes daily because there's so much things going on on a schoolyard that we are not aware of. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is true. You know what I mean? So, and so, this, is uh, the, this is definitely a tragedy, you know, an eight-year-old child, somebody has lost their son. Yeah. Like, I could not even oh fathom gosh. this being, you know, my son. But I think a lot of times as parents, we have to realize that the school 
doesn't see or know everything. They're not omnipresent. The same way as parents, yep. when our kids leave us, we don't know every single right. thing that they're doing, mm -hmm. every single situation that happens with them. So you have teachers who are a lot of time are underpaid, they're overworked, they have a classroom full of children. Yeah. They can't see everything that's happening in the lunchroom, in the bathroom, in recess. I'm pretty sure in your case, there were teachers that didn't know what was going on with you. They just, you know, they're there they're for a job. Some people, like, unfortunately, I had a few teachers that felt like that. This is just a job. And then I had some teachers that really cared about it and yeah. they was on it. Mm -hmm. So I think it starts at home true. where we have to teach our children that it's not okay to go out here and just treat someone a certain way because they're different. Yeah. Or because, you know, and also, not only teach them how to behave with other children, teach them how to behave or how to react if that happens to them. Like, you can come talk to me. A lot of times, there's this barrier and this wall where you and your children live in two different worlds. You're working, you're doing this, yep. you're doing that, and they're living in a whole different world, and they feel like they can't come to us. They feel like they can't talk to us because they won't understand yep. or because it's going to get worse. Because, like, I know with my son, he would probably think, like, I'm not going to tell my mom because she's going to overreact, yes. she's going to go to mm -hmm. the school, right. and they don't want that because now it's like they're a snitch or they're yep. telling. So, you know, we have to have that communication with our children on every level, level to prevent yes, things. That is true. And we just want to say that our thoughts and prayers are with Gabriel's friends and family. For more information on what you can do to prevent bullying in schools, please visit stopbullying.gov.